Hey everyone, today we're going to go on an 87 and a half mile journey through a new part of the desert I haven't explored yet called Arroyo Tapiado. A lot of cool sites along the way. As you'll see, it's a pretty well-known area. We're going to see a lot of others out there with us. Uh, so a fun adventure. Glad to have you along the way. Look forward to it. Here we go. We're in the desert this morning, uh, down on the south side of the park. Beautiful Sunday morning, going to do a little riding. Here we go. Called the Arizona Pacific Railway. Don't quote me, but uh, gentleman John D. Spreckles, don't quote me on that either. I know his last name's right. Uh, Spreckles is a big sugar magnate and uh, commissioned the construction of this railroad back in the day. But uh, it's pretty cool. We're going to just basically straddle it. Um, it goes all the way from somewhere in Arizona and down through Mexico and comes back into the U.S. and leads all the way to San Diego. The San Diego and Arizona Railway was a 148-mile short-line U.S. railroad founded by entrepreneur John D. Spreckles and dubbed the Impossible Railroad by engineers of its day due to the immense logistical challenges involved. It linked San Diego, its western terminus, with El Centro, its eastern terminus, where passengers could connect with Southern Pacific's transcontinental lines, eliminating the need to first travel north via Los Angeles or Riverside. So one thing to consider, this is a good example, I could just cut across through here and tie in with that road, it's pretty open here in the desert, but one thing you've got to consider when you go off the road is potential cactus spines, either you know, dead or living cactus, they can easily puncture your tire and a tube, and then you find yourself Maybe out here something. changing a tube and reattaching your tire. Maybe something, we'll find out. It's growing out of the top of a rock. And then also, it's kind of strange, this little like pile of a structure out here in the middle of nowhere. Kind of cool. So now we're going to begin what I think is the most exciting part of the journey. I'm heading up through Viacito Creek Road up to Arroyo Tapiado which is known for its exciting and extensive network of mud caves, which happen to be the largest network of mud caves in the entire world. While I won't be going through them today, I highly recommend it for those who are adventurous and looking for a thrill. It's pretty neat, but make sure you don't touch the sides or the ceilings of the caves. Arroyo Tapiado is the name of this road here and uh, there's some pretty cool mud caves out here uh, it's one of the largest complexes in the world pretty neat I probably won't go any today because I'm by myself but something to check out you be really careful it's pretty dangerous but a uh, really really cool area I love it may have already noticed, the terrain here is pretty flat and hard packed, so you don't need a four-wheel drive vehicle to get back here. 
which gives cause for it to be one of the most well-traversed and visited parts of the entire Anza Borrego Desert.
All right, we're at uh, Arroyo Seco del Diablo. So I don't know what that means. Something about the the devil. So here we go. I don't know. different type of uh, plant life up here. Pretty cool. Rocks look crazy. Really cool. Look at the little eggs. Look at these guys. Look like drips coming off of here. That is. It appears to dead end. I'm going to check. It's a squeeze right there. I thought the strangest part about this canyon was the fact that there's 4x4 four four tire tracks in the sand. I don't know how in the world they could have gotten through here. It's sections, the canyon is barely wide enough to get my handlebars through, yet there's still four-wheel drive tracks through here. Go figure. It's just limitless out here, all the little adventures you can find. There's so much to see and do, it's just so awesome.
and it changes all the time too. Who needs the three sisters when you got the two brothers? <laughs> <laughs> 